A man who elevated me over and over and over again. Almost every single accomplishment I had in the legislature was Pete Rawls behind me. Amen. And one day I asked, I went to Pete, I said, Pete, and Pete was a guy, and Pete, now, Pete was an interesting brother. <laughs> Pete was the kind of guy who he didn't, he didn't tolerate mediocrity. Mm. He didn't tolerate complacency. So I said, hey, Pete, why are you always looking out for me? And he said, this is what he said, and I will never forget it, Nina. I will never forget it. He said, when I look at you, I see me. Mm. Oh. He said, when I look at you, I see me. I see what I went through. I see somebody struggling, trying to make it. And now I see you, and I'm going to help you get to where you got to go. Wow. It is not asking the question, why did it happen to me? It's why did it happen for me? Yeah. And so as I close, don't I want to be long? I think back over my life. I think back to the mother that stood there and sung the song three Sundays ago. The mother who would get up at five o'clock in the morning, throw a sack over her shoulder. Before that, she fixed breakfast for us. We didn't have much. Usually with cornflakes and powder. Don't look at me like I'm strange. <laughs> Some of y'all don't even know what powder milk was. Mm. Oh, I know. Now look at the chest. Let me give you a chest. <laughs> Carnation? <laughs> Boring? What's up? She would mix the powder milk. Yeah. Mix the powder milk. Tell my older sister, rinse up. Make sure my children pray. Oh, make sure they pray. Make sure they dress right. And then get them off of school. And so then she would go out and she would go to Guilford and roll in the park. The same woman, the same one who three seconds ago stood there and sung a song where everybody else was going berserk. Mm. The same one. She'd go out and clean people's toilets. Mm. Wash their clothes. Take care of their children. Maybe three times a year would bring us back some hand me down. Talk about it. Tired of looking in my underwear and seeing somebody named Shapiro. <laughs> Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Hand me down my underwear. Somebody else named his underwear. <laughs> But she would, that's what she would do. Right. And then she would be like, oh, God. Oh. But then she would come home. She would take care of her kids. Right. And I'll never forget, she would take some of us to the 700 block of West Lexington Street. Uh -huh. There was a little church about one third size of this room. And they would sit around the cold stove, shuffling coal in the stove every hour. And they would sit around and sing hymns and pray and have testimony service. The same woman that three weeks ago stood there. And so then she would leave there sometimes, Nina, and she would go and clean up somebody else's house in the church. Somebody that was sick. Then she would come home, do more things for her children. And I used to, I used to feel so sorry for my mother. I feel the pain 
right now. I felt so sorry for her. Because every night she would sing the same national anthem. She would sing this song. I could not understand why she sung this song. But this was her national anthem. She would say, we are soldiers in the army. We have to fight, although we have to cry. We have to hold up the blood stains at us. We have to hold it up until we die. I didn't understand it. No, I didn't understand it. But when I watched her, when I watched her, I thought about her life.
about these songs you could buy. 